Thank you. I'm Janina Pinsky. I work as a, a leader of services at LACNIC, and I'm going to tell you how to request IPv6. We've talked a lot about IPv6, so very interesting. Now, let me tell you how you can request IPv6 at LACNIC. Let me tell you a bit of the history of the internet. We know that in 1983, the internet uh, was born with the IPv4 addresses. IPv4 addresses, as you know, have 32 bits. At the time, we had uh, 4 billion uh, uh, single addresses. We thought that it was a lot because most users had just one device. So that grew and grew steadily, as we already know. And at a certain time, they detected that they would be the Completed. And so in, uh, then uh, in 1988, uh, they devised, uh, they designed uh, uh, IPv6, and uh, many people that were afraid of uh, the uh, depletion of IPv4, they started uh, deploying, uh, trying to promote the development, uh, the deployment of IPv6. So in uh, 2014, LACNIC participated uh, in a tour to promote the development, and uh, ISOC and several other organizations did a good job to promote uh, IPv6. IPv6, well, there has a huge number of addresses, of public addresses, 346 trillion addresses, and we understand that this should uh, last because it really changes the way we uh, configure the IPs. In IP before, we, um, we um, configure one for, for a device. And here we configure blocks slash uh, for, uh, uh, well, depending on uh, the type of service. And since it was created, we worked to promote its deployment. But the funny thing is that if that, we see that we continue to work in the deployment, but the internet uh, lived uh, for um, for 16 years without IPv6, uh, but we uh, but 20 and 23 without it. So we've uh, it's been around for quite a long time. So how do you request IPv6? The minimum assignment by default that Technic provides is a slash 32. And the requirements that we are to be legally established in the region. We are also going to request a plan. We want to be explained what you're going to be using the IPv6 uh, addresses for with the detail plan, where you are going to announcement, who you're going to give service to. That's what we are going to request. And for the end users, the minimum assignment by default is a slash 48 prefix in both cases. If the organization needs more than that, of course, they can request it. And we just uh, ask them to justify what they're going to use it for. And if it justifies, then we assign it. Here too, they need to be legally established in the region and they have to say, what is the ASN that they're going to be to announce it through? And as I said earlier, to explain the network topology, the detailed description of the usage. Now, how do you request it? You have to enter milaknik um, uh, laknik.net. There you enter your user's name and your password. If you don't have a user's name, you come here, you create a new account and you fill in the format with the basic uh, data and you come in, you enter, and there you see a screen like this one. And you're going to have to go to non-members, non, um, you create an organization if you don't have it, if you already have it, well, I put here just any, and here you put request IP uh, or ASN, here it will be IP, and here it, uh, they'll ask you whether you need IPv6 addresses, and here you put complete request, and there you'll see a 
sign saying that we are in phase three of the depletion of IPv4. And in this phase, if you are if you were to request IPv4, you'd be put in a waiting list, but not that's not what happens with IPv6. And here you come to this part to request resources. Here you are requested, as I said earlier, that that if you are going to request a slash 32 or if you want to mark slash 48, here you mark how many uh, you want to ask. And if you want to order IPv4 uh, with the ASN, and here you have to say whether your organization would be a final user or an ISP, depending on the case. And there it takes you to this screen. And what you need to do is to explain in detail what the usage plan will be, how you are going to use the prefixes. And then in the complementary information, you need to specify who your internet providers are, if you have IP addresses assigned by your provider, and any information that you think might be helpful to your request, put it here. And if you have any files that may be of any use, you can also attach it here. So there you'll have a notification that the requester was correctly received and you receive a mail in your email like this telling you that well we received your request uh, the data of the form and an analyst will contact you soon so that would be in a nutshell how to request ip it's uh, quite easy i'm also going to leave you this uh, is uh, for you to ask any questions if you have any and then I wanted to share st some statistics on IPv6. What the evolution of uh, the IPv6 assignments has been at LACNIC in previous years. You see that uh, there's an increase, there's a growth of the assignments. Last year, that, that's the last year that we have full, almost 18 hundred uh, IPv6 assignments. Here you see that we've grown steadily. And here you can see the prefixes that were assigned and what are the percentages that are being announced. And we see that Brazil, so far it's the one that has announced more of the prefixes assigned uh, more than 60 percent there are some reports too of membership on ipv6 and you see that separated by lacnic and each of the rirs and lacnic we can see that we have 94 percent uh 2700 uh, uh, organizations with IPv6 and only uh, 2,767 who have IPv6 and 171. No, don't. And in Brazil, 8,355 uh, have IPv6 and 196 don't. And in Mexico, 298 organizations have IPv6 that, that accounts for 78%. Uh, so you see that uh, almost everybody has IPv6, but uh, LACNIC policies determine that when IPv4 is assigned, you must also request IPv6. That's why it's also interested to, to see, uh, in addition to see how many organizations have IPv6 announced, how many are uh, announcing it, not just how many there are, have it. So, you see that 96% uh, of all the organizations have IPv6 and 1.74 have IPv6 only. So some measurements of a deployment of IPv6, so we have seen it in other. Um, these are more public measurements. You can see it in by the content provider or the access provider, the ISP, 
or also through an external observer. There are different methodologies to see each. From the side of uh, the content uh, provider, they usually publish them. Then we're going to see Google Akamai and the access provider. They should also publish it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And in the case of the external observer, there are different methodologies to take the data, but they are specific. It is done through the lo uh, processing of the logs, how much traffic comes in through IPv6 and IPv4. Here, this is, you see that Google shows that it's increasing over 35% in the last month. Here we can see how the, the deployment in each of the countries we see that Brazil is, well, we're going to see in our region, Brazil is one that has deployed the most, and so is Mexico. Here you see it better. We have Mexico, 43%, Uruguay and Brazil, too. And as to access measurements, we have data, for instance, by Antil, that, uh, an ISP in Uruguay, and we were told that the proportion of uh, uh, fixed IPv6 uh, users is 40%, and as new information that didn't happen in the past, uh, in, I, uh, in IPv6 mobile is about 64%, and that has increased. And as to the traffic, 25% approximately of IPv6 is toward the clients. Some relevant comments. In our region, uh, it's led by Brazil and Uruguay. Well, as I said, in our region, followed by Ecuador, Peru, and then Paraguay, Argentina. Those would be leading the uh, IPv6 deployment ranking. Colombia has grown a lot they have implemented from government, they have a decree for the implementation of IPv6. So many organizations had to deploy it. In Central America and Mexico, it grew a lot too. And in the Caribbean, it's, uh, they find it a bit harder, but Trinidad and Tobago is one of the countries where IPv6 uh, is uh, seen and Dominican Republic. So um, how to go on with IPv6, how to monitor it? We have uh, courses at LACNIC, you, and we also want to recommend the campus uh, courses that we have at LACNIC. These are all the courses. Um, uh, they're all in campus lacnic.net, but we have one of basic IPv6 and one of advanced IPv6, and you can acquire both basic and uh, um, advanced uh, knowledge, and you also have hands-on parts that are very well scored, very uh, uh, people appreciate the courses, so I recommend them. So I'll leave you more time, well, time for questions. Well, thank you, Janina, for your presentation. Now let's wait 30 seconds to uh, give some time for people to ask questions in the Q&A. There you have Q&As. Everything was very clear, Janina. Hopefully. <laughs> Either it's all clear or nothing is clear. Well, now in the chat, I'm going to give you an email just in case you want to ask any questions later on. Maybe later, I'll leave you an email address. Yes, good. So I think that we hope that with this, after this presentation, more people will come requesting IPv6 resources if you didn't in the past.